How's it going everyone? Chris with Be Automation here and in this presentation I'm going to show you the exact method that I use and my coaching clients use to deliver home and building automation projects ranging from 15k all the way through to 120k plus. Before we start though I want to show you proof that what I'm presenting to you comes from a place of first-hand real-world experience and that I've helped electrical business owners and contractors develop their businesses within the automation industry. So a quick lowdown on my experience. I've been an electrical mechanical engineer since starting my apprenticeship out of school and I've worked across three main industries of automation, that being smart home, BMS and industrial controls. Firstly, with Loxon UK as a partner coach, helping Loxons install a network win and deliver home and commercial building automation projects. Secondly, with R&B Industrial as an electrical controls engineer responsible for every step of the control system. So from design, panel build and programming all the way through to on-site installation and commissioning. And finally, as a contractor for Neo System Automation, delivering high-end residential home automation and BMS systems. And as mentioned, whilst working at Loxon, coaching their partners a network on how to grow their businesses and deliver successful projects in the world of automation. I was fortunate enough to work with who, in my opinion, are now some of the top guys in the industry. People like Peter, Dan, Zach, who I now consider to be good friends. I now want to share with you some details from my most recent smart home project as a solo business owner. Now, this was a relatively small project, but let's go through the financials. So just under 18K for design, panel build, and and on-site commissioning and just under 32k for the locks on hardware. So that's a total project value of 50k and all the installation work was done by the builder's electrical contractor. So not included in this total price and this isn't something that I tend to get involved with. I also decided to clock every minute that I spent working on this project which came to a total of 148 hours which rounded up is around 19 eight hour working days. Now as a little thought experiment, I wanted to know theoretically how much I could make in a year doing this type of project as a solo business owner and I wanna share with you what I found. So the maths breaks down as follows. 365 days in a year, obviously, and this project took me a total of 19 working days. So 365 days divided by 19 working days rounded down is 19 projects I could theoretically deliver within a year. The total project value as discussed was 50K. So 50K multiplied by that 19 projects in a year equals a top line annual revenue of 950,000. That's one project short of 1 million in annual turnover as a solo business owner, which I think is pretty good going. Also bear in mind that manufacturers like Loxon, KNX and Control 4 provide trade discounts. And these range from 20 to 40% depending on the manufacturer and product. So on that 32Ks worth of hardware, six and a half to 12 and a half would be straight profit from the trade discount that you get. So an average of nine and a half K per project multiplied by 19 projects per year equals a total of 18K in straight profit just from the trade discount you get buying the hardware. But working 365 days a year as a solo business owner, delivering 19 projects without a team to help you isn't really realistic. But what I do think is realistic and achievable for new solo business owners is let's say eight projects per year, which breaks down to 400K in top line revenue with a straight profit from the hardware coming in at 76K. Now, the biggest problem I've seen from my time working in the industry is that manufacturer training like Loxon, KNX, Control 4, etc., only focuses on the programming. And this is understandable because they only have four days to teach you how to make stuff happen using their system. But let's for a minute imagine you've just finished the manufacturer training with little to no previous experience. What typically happens is firstly, you'll realize there's a lot more that goes into delivering automation projects and you'll struggle to find the right level of help and support moving forward. So ultimately, you'll be feeling a little bit lost and won't really know where to go from there to progress. And then number two, you'll win a project, but due to the lack of knowledge and understanding, 
you'll end up underpricing it because you don't know how and where to price your time. And because of all the different options that can be used in terms of hardware, it's difficult knowing early on what hardware is compatible or best suited to particular applications. And what ends up happening is you'll have to order additional hardware that you didn't price for, things won't work properly, and you'll have to spend more time again, which you haven't priced for. Also, when you start the commissioning towards the end of the project, you'll always have some level of fault finding. And because you haven't built up a good enough understanding yet in electrical controls, which is the foundation of any automation project, you'll find that you'll quickly get overwhelmed with all these faults that you have to fix. And as I'm sure you can imagine, by the end of this project, you've had such a stressful experience, you've inevitably made a loss, and in most cases, the client has also had a negative experience. So why would you ever want to go through all of this again? And the things that I've just mentioned are just a few of the problems that I've experienced firsthand, and that I've also seen hundreds of other electrical businesses and contractors experience from my time working with Loxon. And the sad truth is, and it's totally understandable, that these businesses and contractors don't make any real progress into the automation industry and then go back to doing the same old electrical work that they wanted to get away from in the first place. Now, there's obviously more details that go into delivering automation projects, but I'm gonna give you the 10-step framework that I use and teach my coaching clients, which can be used universally across any type of automation project across any industry. And my hope is that if you're less experienced and haven't developed your own method, you can use this to help understand the life cycle of a project, set expectations with the client, and ultimately give you a good foundation to start from. First of all, though, I want to share a little strategy I use to weed out time-wasting prospects and ensure that I get paid for my time before the project officially starts. So after the initial call or email exchange with the prospect, and I wouldn't be investing any more than an hour max of my time here, I'd be setting the expectation that if they were willing and wanting to move forward to the next stage where I create a detailed and accurate proposal, I would be charging an initial design and proposal fee of X amount. And I explained that this would be refunded once contracts were signed. And for context, I charge between 250 and a thousand pounds and it usually takes me about four to eight hours to put this proposal together after the discovery session with the client. Now, in terms of communicating this with the client, I'm very open and transparent and just explain that I do this for two reasons. Number one, it weeds out time wasters. And number two, it does take a considerable amount of time to put together accurate proposals. And yes, of course, this strategy means that I do lose out on some projects, but it also means that I'm able to filter out clients who don't respect and value my time. And then as a result of this, a good working relationship naturally develops, which helps with repeat business, positive testimonials, and business, my business, stays in business long-term. Now, onto the method. Firstly, we need to work backwards. So what subsystems does the client want? So lighting, blinds, HVAC, etc and what level of functionality and control do they want with those subsystems next we need to translate that control and functionality into hardware and products then we need to calculate all the costs involved including hardware time expenses and most importantly a profit margin and we can now submit all of that in an initial design and proposal next after some inevitable back and forth making changes we can now submit the final proposal and contract and we need to make sure we're very clear in the contract that we set expectations and communicate where our responsibilities begin and where they finish next the initial payment of about 20% will now be made to cover design and documentation work and also any first fixed hardware like cables. And once these are complete, they can be sent to the client and installation team for first fix. And then after first fix, but before the walls and ceilings get closed up, we need to make sure we visit site to check that the cable infrastructure matches our designs. And then once we're happy with that, we can begin with second fix. Following on from that, the second payment of about 60% will now be made, and this is for the hardware used in the control panel and the second fix items. After that, the control panel can be built, and I recommend doing that off-site. Once that's completed, 
it can be sent to site for the installation team to mount to the wall. And generally speaking, I wouldn't allow the installation team to do any of the final cable terminations into the panel unless I knew that they were competent of doing so. And then ideally, once everything has been completed on site, we would spend three or four days doing the commissioning and client handover. And then a few days after this, the third payment of 10% will be made. And then finally, one to two months later, we will come back for a day to do a functionality optimization and energy optimization. And then again, a few days after this, we'd expect the final 10% payment to be made. Now that's the 10 step framework but there's a couple of additional things that I'd recommend doing. Firstly, let's increase our chances of winning our next project. And to do that, we need to maximize the power of social proof and word of mouth. So we need to be taking photos and videos for promotional content as we work through the project. And then at the end of the project, we need to make sure that we ask the client for referrals, reviews, and testimonials. The second thing, which you may or may not want to offer, depending on where you want to take your business, but that would be a support and aftercare package. And it's worth pointing out, having these multiple recurring revenue streams like aftercare packages does increase quite substantially the value of a business if you do ever decide to sell up in the future. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's obviously more detail that goes into delivering automation projects, but I'm hoping this general framework will help you understand the path a project takes, helps you set expectations with the client, and ultimately helps you avoid making mistakes as you progress into the industry. Now, if you or perhaps you'd like one of your team members to get a deeper understanding of how to implement what we've been through, then you might be interested to learn about our coaching programs. And there are a few different levels available depending on where you're at with your business. But with all of them, you'll get practical, hands-on training. So what I mean by that is it's not theoretical, it's not out of a book, and we focus on real-world projects coached by people like myself who have real world experience and know how to deliver projects successfully within the automation industry. So if you're a business owner or self-employed contractor, I'd like to invite you to book a call with us so we can learn a bit more about you and your business and discover maybe two or three things that you can do within your business immediately to really help you move the needle in the direction that you want to go. And if you then want to do that on your own, that's totally cool. Or if you feel like we can help you and you'd like to work with us, that's even better. And if that was the case, we would then walk you through the process on how we would get your business to a point where you're getting results and able to deliver projects consistently within the automation industry. So if you're still here and you're a business owner or self-employed contractor wanting to build a successful business in automation, just book a call with us down below. It's completely free. Worst case scenario is you waste a small amount of time. Best case scenario, it changes you and your business. Thanks for your time and attention. Really appreciate it and hopefully see you again soon.